Good morning. Good morning. Wow. A blessed Labor Day to all of you in the room, those online visiting us. Love having you with us always. It's a beautiful day. It's a day worth giving thanks for. So let's stand and say thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This year, then this year, then this year, then day. This year, then this year, then this year, then day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This year, then this year, then this year, then day. This year, then this year, then this year, then day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healed and this healed and this healing day. This healed and this healed and this healing day. Yes, very worthy to give thanks to, very worthy to give thanks for. Well, this is a new month, and we always like to acknowledge birthdays at the beginning of this new month of September. Uh, i just like to say this is my month, and this is Becky's month, Becky's month also. And I'm sure there are a few others out there online and, and in the room this morning. So if you don't have, have a birthday, please sing to those who do. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, you are wonderful. Happy birthday to you. 
God is blessing you now. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you. You are wonderful. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Good morning. This is a very excited crowd today. <laughs> I know, and thanks to the choir and Dr. Becky getting us all charged up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, I'm so happy to be here today. Mm -mm -mm. Our daily word comes from July. And this gives you a preview of what's coming the rest of the day. It's going to be great. I am liberated when I forgive. I bind myself to the past and place limits on my future when I withhold forgiveness and cling to resentment. I want to free myself from these heavy feelings and live with a clear mind and clean heart. Even if I feel my resentment is justified, I can look beyond it and find feelings of hurt, disappointment, and betrayal. I am gentle with myself as I allow these feelings to come to the surface. I practice spiritual surrender as I release the burden of unforgiveness. The burden of unforgiveness. I commit to this process, remembering Jesus' words, to continually forgive one another. I extend this forgiving attitude inward, freeing myself from past words and deeds that I have come to regret. Through forgiveness, I am free. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. From Psalms 51.10. Let us pray. Oh. Dear Mother, Father, God, we're here together. And sometimes we can hold on to pain, either for ourselves or for others. Right now, we are ready to surrender that. So just say to yourself, I now forgive everyone and everything I need to forgive. I now forgive myself. I now forgive everyone I need to forgive. And everyone that needs to forgive me does so now. We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge your presence and your power, O blessed Spirit. In your divine wisdom, now erase our human limitations, and from the pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to your perfect law. Join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. So please stand and let's sing together. Life is magic because it is. Life is brilliant. So
last week but Dr. Becky filled in <laughs> okay now our statement of faith there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life God the good omnipotence now this is the time we welcome all visitors for the first time and our dear Lisa, she has actually pulled them from a Unity Church in Wisconsin today, <laughs> just for this service. <laughs> so if you are here for the first time, we have a packet of information. If you'll just raise your hand. Okay. Yep. All right, up there in the very front. Yeah. Good. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We hope you find something in your heart, something that you heard today that will bring you back. And there is coffee and goodies after church, compliments of the choir. There are coffee angels, so please join us, okay? Now, announcements. Oh my goodness. Remember when we went to the drive-in theater and a half hour early, there was an announcement, announcement, announcement of coming attractions. That's what this is like. This is so exciting. And I'm not going to tell you all of them, just the ones that are coming up quickly. First of all, we want to thank our dear Carol Evans. For our prosperity fund, she actually created $967. <laughs> and then we want to thank Donna, Ursula, and Deborah for the bake sale last week. Yeah, Donna Fennell. Yeah, Donna Fennell. And they brought in $393. And now we know there are no calories, no bad fats, no carbs, no gluten in anything that is brought to this facility, okay? Okay. Keep that in mind. Oh boy, this is a special week for us at Unity. It's World Day of Prayer on Thursday. It starts Wednesday night on your computer. You can go to Unity dot org and sign up they give you a link it will start at 8 p.m. it's fabulous they have some incredible speakers lined up and here Thursday at 10 a.m. we will have our opening ceremony and Reverend Teresa will be here there will be chaplains here all day long Ken will close us out with a song at 4 o'clock we will have a, a labyrinth thanks to Carol we will have different stations where you can just sit and pray. The chaplains will be here all day for prayer. All right. This has been going on for many, many, many years, and I love it. I'm half ready to stay today and not go home. <laughs> I am so excited about it. Then next Sunday, we are having our summer salad festival, thanks to Royce and his group. The tickets are on sale. It's uh, just not healthy salads, okay? I don't want people to think we're serving weird food. We're not. <laughs> You'll be able to recognize all of it. And if you don't, after that, I'm doing a class on nutrition. <laughs> now, I've been doing this for many, 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 many years. And anybody can come to this. If you eat out three meals a day, which I know some people do, I can help you find the right things to eat. If you cook for just yourself or two or for a large family, if you have any questions, if you don't know why you need to eat zucchini or artichokes, I can help you with that. 
there will be a booklet with and recipes included in this. And it's they're both ten dollar love offerings. Okay. There's more. There's more. <laughs> yes. One more and okay, the prosperity project, and then I'll yes. Lisa, yes. <laughs> Lisa, yes, yes. Good morning. I'm only going to talk for about 20 more minutes, so you're good. <laughs> then we've got the lesson and some more music, so there'll be snacks available midway. So our Prosperity Project is going amazing. We are so proud and happy. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who's participated either by hosting something or co-hosting something or coming along for the ride for salads and baked goods and hot dogs. Oh, my. So we're at 31% of our goal, so we're doing, we're right on track, we're doing great. And we know that we are not just doing this here, right? It's changing the consciousness, it's that ripple effect. We dropped a little stone in the water and we're rippling the effect throughout the world, changing the prosperity consciousness. Do we need some of that in our world? Yeah, we sure do, we sure do. We've created these beautiful little pamphlets and they're back on the card table where all of the sign up is for Thanksgiving. Nobody talked about that yet. <laughs> so they're beautiful, they're in color. And um, re remember we're doing projects, we're also doing our personal giving. So just upping your tithe by a dollar or rounding it up, especially if you donate on PayPal because we do have fees associated with that. So if you could just help us cover those costs, we appreciate it. And remember when someone does a project, we can volunteer to help them. As the bake sale, we had extra volunteers to help with that. So please feel free to reach out to myself or Kenise or anybody here that's on the board or part of our staff to sign up and help. And also we are asking for 100% participation and I think we're doing really good with that. So that means volunteering, helping with projects, coming to projects and additional tithing. So we really appreciate all of it. Has it not been so much fun to do community again? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited about salads. I haven't been here for a few weeks, so I didn't know about that. So I'll see you all next Sunday for some salad. Oh, oh, oh and Janie's welcome to our team. Is Janie here? Oh, there she is. Janie's a new addition to our prosperity team, and we love some new energy, and thank you. She's also a prayer chaplain. She just became a member this year. You are a rock star, Janie. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Before I talk about Thanksgiving, I want to thank the AV team. You're really doing a good job. Yes. We just keep looking back to make sure we're on track, but you're doing great. Thanksgiving. After two years of not having it, we have it this year. It'll be on Saturday, November 19th. Now, to have Thanksgiving dinner, we have to have two team leaders. So somebody volunteer really fast. Oh, okay. Sign up sheets in the back. See Shonda. Okay, it's done, yay, good. And we'll need, a, we'll need volunteers. Thank you. We'll need volunteers. And it's going to be so good to be back in Thanksgiving with everybody. I can't wait. Best food in the world here. All right. Now, on September 24th, our dear, beloved Judy Gerber passed away a few weeks ago. And her celebration of life will be here at 11 o'clock. And remember, we have chaplains at the wall after church. And it can be for something you that's heavy on your heart, or if you just want some joyful praying, we're here for you. We love to pray. Use us. And now, it's Ken, right? <laughs> no? Song? <laughs> yes, meditation song. Sorry about that.
Let's close our eyes and take a deep breath and go to that special place in our hearts, that beautiful heart space where love lives and today where forgiveness lives. Surrender yourself into forgiveness. No matter who it's for, or what situation, and especially for yourself. No matter how old the pain is, it doesn't matter. Because today, you can release it. When we forgive, we are free. And dear ones, that's such a beautiful place to be in. So open your mind and your hearts in your ears and listen to the beautiful message that will be coming forth from Reverend Teresa. Just surrender yourself and be open to forgiveness. Let's just stay in this presence for a few more minutes. Blessings abound in this moment, silent and open, listening. Spirit, I feel a 
everyone. Morning. How grateful I am to be here with all of you. Welcome everyone here in the sanctuary and all of you joining us online. So I went to a concert last night and this is the title of one of this gentleman's song who's um, nothing but good vibes and putting out good stuff in the world so you know we all connect with that right. So one of the his lesson title is today is a very good day to have a good day. <laughs> Could you say that with me? Today is a very good day to have a good day, even if the minister is going to talk about forgiveness. <laughs> it's a good thing. Hold on now. God the good omnipotence right here. Yes? Yes. So here we are, friends, working our way through this process of healing in the hallways. And before I begin with that, I want to say thank you so much, Rusty, our, our beloved prayer chaplain coordinator, for being here and sharing your beautiful energy with me and everyone else this morning. So I thank you so much. And so indeed, we are continuing this process of our healing through the hallways using Reverend Ellen Debenport's book, uh, as our reference for this, Hell in the Hallway, Light at the Door, as our guide. And so we've explored, up to this point, waking up and noticing that indeed, huh, we've been having a hallway experience, perhaps, or have in the past. 
And we're working on some aspects of acceptance towards that, as well as working into surrendering just to the fact of perhaps being in the hallway. And now that we're in the hallway, we're noticing a few things. We're noticing <laughs> some of the fears that are coming up for us while we're in that hallway experience. And last week, we also talked about the fact that generally or most likely for all of us, if we're in this hallway experience of any sort, a change and a transition that's occurring, there is some grief associated with that also. And then in, in, in realizing that aspect of it, we're also inviting ourselves to allow ourselves to be supported in this hallway experience by the divine within us as well as others along our path that are here to support us. And being aware of those that are supporting us to see us as victorious in this hallway experience and not as victims. So that's a quick recap. <laughs> and one of the most important things, there's no running in the hallways, right? <laughs> no running in the hallway, meaning try our best to have some patience with ourselves and some compassion and kindness with ourselves to allow ourselves time in this experience to receive the gifts that are ours to receive in this process. Change and transition. Change and transition. So today that brings us to the lesson title of Untie the Knot. Untie the Knot, and you'll see where that came from. I like that, Untie the Knot. So again, one of our most important steps in moving through this hallway of life is forgiveness. Now friends, some of us may, <sighs> really? Yes, <laughs> forgiveness. And I also wanted to share this as well. Remember that we're in this process of raising our prosperity consciousness. And so far as I know, this part in my life, there is no prosperity work that does not include forgiveness. And we're gonna see why, how that, how that plays into all of this. And so if we are not at that place where we can, in our situation in the hallway, where we can feel as though we are at that place of forgiveness, I'm gonna invite us in the, to this morning to simply have a willingness to forgive. And if you're not even at that place to have a willingness to forgive, then I'm gonna invite us in to have a willingness to have a willingness. <laughs> Okay, so, so what, am I saying? what am I saying about all that? We're all included, right? We're all included. Wherever you are at in your process, we're all here together. And so what happens in this place, I thought to myself, well, what happens is, is that we are willing to have an expansion in our minds and then truly gently to realize in our hearts that our hearts no longer want to be bound by the restriction of unforgiveness. Love is what we are, friends. Love is what we are. And so we also come to know that this forgiveness process is no, check that box, I'm done with that now. It doesn't work like that either, does it? It's not a, I wanted it to be like that. But my experience is, is not so. It's a continual unfolding process and progress. Progress. So we'll approach it with gentleness with ourselves, okay? So Devin Port shares this in this chapter, I loved it. She says, no matter how you got into the hallway, no matter what you think caused it, no matter how much it hurts now, and even if the experience will serve you in the long run, you no doubt have something or someone to forgive. And friends, forgiveness absolutely is crucial for us to leaving the hallway and being able to get to and open the next door. One door closes, another door opens, and we're progressing through. So this indeed is ours to do so that we can what? So that we can step into the greater possibilities for our lives, but not just our lives, friends, this world, this world. Imagine what would our world look like with a little more forgiveness going on? 
a little more forgiveness going on. Let it begin with me. And so we want to say, I wrote in here my notes, take a deep breath with me. <laughs> release that breath. And we're going to call forth a little Winnie the Pooh consciousness right now where he goes, oh, bother. Right? Don't you feel that way about forgiveness sometimes? Oh, bother. You can say it with me. Oh, bother. <laughs> Yes, Winnie the Pooh consciousness. <laughs> okay, friends, here we go. This is how the title came into being. It says, the Greek word for forgive means to untie the knot. And that spoke to me. Doesn't that seem like that's what happens in, for, in unforgiveness? So this morning, we're going to work together to untie the knot. It says, once untangled from the past, you will be free to move forward. It is that unforgiveness or our lack of willingness to forgive that keeps us bound up in knots, doesn't it? And unable to progress our way through that hallway. So isn't it time right here this day to have a willingness just to untie the knot? At least loosen it up a bit, huh? We're just going to at least loosen it up. And in that place of willingness, what happens to us? We can take a breath, we can release, and we pray to become free, to see people, places, and things just a little bit differently, just to have the willingness to see it differently, and that we learn to see ourselves differently. Isn't it time to quit holding ourselves hostage, to see ourselves differently? So in that hallway, we learn to be sure to include ourselves in the forgiveness process. And I'm going to invite us in to actually put ourselves at the top of the list of forgiveness so that we can begin to untie that knot. She says, Devonport, the key to forgiveness is to stop insisting on what ought to have happened. Oh, boy. <laughs> to stop making up stories about how your life should have been different. And oh, my goodness. If we are honest, at times in our lives, we have set up camp there, haven't we? Oh, this isn't the way it should be. Should have been different. And we just keep relighting that campfire so that we wouldn't have to move, right? That ego will just keep us busy. And I know it's not just me. I know we're all the same, right? <laughs> I've had some big bonfires there in my past. <laughs> just set up camp, yep. So I said on, on, on my notes here, share this personal story. I didn't really want to, but here it is. So... One particular incident in my life took me, I don't even know how many years, more years than I care to count on uh, to work my way through this forgiveness process. But I share this with you because I want to share with you how I got tangled up in it. And I got tangled up in it because I thought I was spending all of my time trying to forgive this particular person. And I moved myself through that little hallway. If I wasn't really willing, then I became willing to be willing and you know, working my way through this process. But it still seemed, no matter how much counseling I did, no matter how many times I talked to Reverend Carmen about it, and she probably was like, oh, bother. No, <laughs> she wasn't. She always offered me love, kindness, and compassion, always. Um, but no matter how much I did, I still could not get there. So here's how it unfolded. What did I have to do? I bought a plane ticket, took a trip out to Unity Village. I was on my merry way taking uh, spiritual enrichment courses, stayed out there for a week. You can see the, the dollar figures adding up here, right? Mm -hmm. Train, plane trip back. But as I'm sitting in that class, what do you think the class was that I was taking? Healing and wholeness. Okay. See, I thought I was going out there to see if I was really going to be a minister. And this is way back when. Um, so that's what I thought I was going there for. And in this process, I had a unity minister say something to me, and she used language that I never thought a minister would use. Um, and she says to me, because I'm explaining to her my, my issue about this forgiveness thing, and she says, honey, forget forgiving them. Forgive yourself. And I went, what? 
So I fly back home. About a month later, here I am, minding my own business. I know exactly where I was. I was vacuuming my kitchen floor. <laughs> and boom, it hit me. The floodgates came. I'm crying my eyeballs out. And it finally dawned on me. So I am telling you all of this here this morning to save you money. No plane trip. I mean, go out to Unity Village and have a great time. I do recommend that. But I'm telling you, put yourself truly, all jest and humor aside, put yourself at the top of the list. And if you're having any difficulty anywhere, then you ask Spirit to reveal to you, is there something here within me, Spirit, that I need to look at that I need to forgive? In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse 34, it says this, And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I chose that scripture, and I'll tell you why. So metaphysically, this scripture teaches us to go to a deeper spiritual truth here. And it says, Of what is forgiveness a sign? Of the universal life consciousness, since all men are one, everyone who wishes to realize freedom from condemnation freely forgives each other, no matter how great the offense. Take a breath. No matter how great the offense. And what does the prayer, Father, forgive them, show? It shows divine love, perfect as the Father's love. It shows, too, that Christ makes all men, and women, that's a collective word, one in consciousness that Jesus had developed the idea of universal oneness. Now friends, most of us are familiar with that scripture. It comes from when Jesus is on the cross as he was being crucified. Now in our minds, we want to say, sure, Jesus could say that, but how could I say that? Our great example. Yes, our great example, but it is just that, showing and demonstrating to us that humankind through our Christ nature, which is indeed our truth, through our Christ nature, we can do this. We can do this. Whatever it is that's going on with you, we can do this. So take another breath with me. And it is ours to begin to follow the example. And I thought this scripture has two parts for me in forgiveness. And it was first that I noticed that Jesus began with Father. So to me, that tells me that it is not me of my human nature or my ego that is going to be able to do this work. It is going to be from within, that spiritual nature, that Christ nature, that place within me when I can greet you and see the divinity in you because I can see the divinity in myself first and know the truth. That's how it's going to come into being. That is the place where I can begin to embrace forgiveness not my ego, because my ego will, ego will fool me, and I'll go right into judgment and resistance. And we know that. We talked about that last week, that our pain and suffering comes from our resistance. And, of course, we know that that human mind can have a list longer than my arms can stretch as to why we shouldn't forgive. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. They didn't do right. That situation isn't right. It's unfair. It's unjust. It's all of those things. Plus, it wants to play that old tune of how I have been done wrong. Yeah. I have been done wrong. And friends, I don't think for one second that this life that we're living does not have times that are painful, that we are hurting, that we have disappointments, times of suffering, when life can feel as though it's upended in some way. It happens in this human condition, doesn't it? That life can be that roller coaster ride at times. And it's a roller coaster that goes like this. Life can be magical and exhilarating and disappointing and joyous and devastating and sad and unbearable and ordinary. And then magical and exhilarating once again. And it is a ride. And it is a ride. But she says, Devonsport says that the worst suffering is when we get attached to that place within us that says things need to be different. Things need to be different. This shouldn't be happening. It isn't fair. And what if? And why? And that every thought feels like a stab wound until you are able to accept, forgive, and release. 
Which brings me to that second part of that scripture, for they know not what they do. And friends, when we get locked into that in our minds and we can't see that light at the door and we're stumbling around in that hallway because we get attached to what that ego wants. So as long as I'm an invested and directed by the ego that wants to blame, punish, judge, and resist, I'm in ignorance to my spiritual identity at that time. I've stepped away from it, right? I'm blinded in the hallway, and I can see no light. And I've blocked my illumination. That's what happens to us, I believe. And we've all stumbled around like this in the hallway. I did for years on that particular circumstance. Years. But today is a new day. And it's a very good day to have a good day. <laughs> a day of unlimited possibilities. Because, friends, we don't have to be in the pain of that resistance and believing that things should have been different or should not have ever happened. Because within those judgments lies our suffering. Lies our suffering. And I don't for one think, not one moment think, that this is not high spiritual calling. But it is. And we are here to do the work. Want to see some things change in our world? Let it begin with me. For they know not what they do. They, we know not what we do because we got stuck in error thinking, that's all. We just got stuck. So here's some, Devin, some of Devonport's bits of wisdom on this. She says, you only have to forgive the things or people you have judged to be wrong in the first place. That's all you have to do. That's it. I wrote down, Oh my, OMG, were you looking for some better news than that? It starts off really good. You only have to <laughs> forgive everything. I wanted something easier. How about you? It's going to get easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. You might have to forgive others for the way, she, she's sharing this now. You might have to forgive others for the way they lived or died or just for being who they are. Friends, this is me talking now. Friends, in our humanity, we want some of these people to fit into molds, don't we? Because in truth, I want them to make me happy. I want them to follow my rules. Rules that I may or may not have explained to them. <laughs> right? Don't we do that? I want things my way. The right way. And who knows what the right way is? See, I see somebody over here laughing. They know. Yes, my way, the right way. Yes, of course. Thank you for pointing that out to everybody. Yes, that's what happens to us. Has anyone here ever had a family member that they wanted to change? <laughs> Spouse, partner, child, mother, father, on and on and on. And we get so intertwined in it, don't we? Further, they're not changing. Now I'm not happy. Now I'm not happy. Now what happens? Let me bring my bag of goodies with me, filled with judgment, blame, and resentment. Who do you suppose is suffering? Don't you just love that part? Here you are. You're all upset. Oh, I'm going to show them, and you're just fuming on the inside. Mm. They're all having a good old happy time. They don't even know you're upset. <laughs> How many times have you done that? Oh, let's not count. <laughs> Another part of Devonport's bits of wisdom, she says, you might have to forgive yourself for the choices you made, mm -hmm. for the actions you took, mm -hmm. even the feelings you felt. Anybody ever have a conversation start like this? You know, I know I really shouldn't feel this way, but I just have to tell you. <laughs> Since you're, since you're chuckling with me, I know it's not just me. Okay, here it comes. If you remember nothing else, take this with you. Every act of forgiveness boils down to self-forgiveness. Oh, I want it to be about them sometimes, don't you? <laughs> it isn't. Because all of our power lies right here, doesn't it? And what can we do there? We can ask to see it differently, ask to see the good 
ask to see the good, just as our master teacher gave us that great example. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. She says, forgiveness is both a miracle and grace. Your role is to be willing to forgive. One day, the anger and pain, the emotional charge, the energy will have dissolved, and you will be free. Take a breath. Release that breath. No accident that this lesson is showing up because that person that I was describing earlier to you um, is no longer in my life and I received some information and it was just a, like a cloud passing by. There was no emotional charge to it anymore. There was nothing. And I didn't particularly like know when did that happen. I don't know, but I'm grateful, I'm grateful. So I read this from Reverend Sheila McKeithen, and she says this. These teachings about forgiveness offer practical spiritual tools that can be applied universally, enabling all people to be victorious in their circumstances rather than victims. We are not victims, friends. And from Dr. Emily Cady, she wrote this. Victory must be won in the silence of your own being first. In other words, victory is an inside job but then shows outer demonstration in one's life, the world, and in our affairs. Life can be challenging, she says, in the words of 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. For the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in this world. There is a great comfort in knowing that the God stuff of which we are made, that divinity within us, is greater than the appearance of any challenges before us. I invite you to take that into your heart right now, greater than any challenge before us. She says, it was up to me to stand guard at the entrance of my own soul and be truthful yet loving, stern yet confident, and victorious yet humble, just as it is up to all of us to do the very same thing for ourselves. <laughs> Matthew West. Okay, I want to invite you just to close your eyes with me for just a minute.
Father, Mother, God, we choose right here, right now. Just to begin to let go. To release and let go and surrender. Any of those painful places within us. And simply become willing to forgive. knowing that we came here to live life abundantly. So we choose to gently let go of any blame that we're holding on to for ourselves or others. We deserve so much better than to beat ourselves up for any perceived past wrongs, things that we cannot understand. And yet we can go forth this day with faith and an expectancy of knowing <coughs> that in time, with a willingness, as we tap into that divine within us, we begin to see a new door, a new option, a new way, greater possibilities for our lives. We indeed are entering into a new phase of our lives. So we choose this day to be guided away from judgment, blame, any self-righteous indignation, and move forward to a fresh and clear new day into the divine light that welcomes you. Take a deep breath in. Release that breath. My dear friends, as you join me back here, indeed, we are moving through this period of transition. A new door and a new part of your life is opening to you now. I encourage us all, don't drag around the old stuff with us anymore. We don't need to. We don't need to. Untie the knot. Your highest and the best awaits you now. God is blessing you this day and always. Namaste. Please stand as we sing together more than enough.
to share our gifts and our tithes. <clears throat> Excuse me, please join me now in our affirmation of abundance. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and it is so. with me once again. Take a deep breath in. Release that breath with me. Always gratitude. Thank you, God. Will you speak that with me? Thank you, God. Thank you, God, knowing that your love, your infinite love, your unconditional love, that divine within us is always leading us and guiding us to our next highest and best as we set ourselves free through the gift of forgiveness. We bless each gift and the giver, knowing that more good is created right here. And we take God's love, goodness, and actions out into the world to be a brighter light. We honor all prayer requests in our prayer box, knowing and affirming the highest and best for all. And once again, we say thank you, God, for this time together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, ushers. Okay, friends, I know you're about to check in your watches and everything like that. In my defense, I just want to say, do you know how long, how many announcements we have? <laughs> I'm up here speed praying yeah. now. That's okay. All prayer is good. <laughs> Join me, please, for our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Please stand and sing our peace song.